Hello, welcome to the dollhouse. I am the doll and today I am back with more 4B content because it has really been heavy on my mind. It has really been something that I feel has really shaken me up quite a bit because I was already on the decentering men train, but I've had a lot of time to think about this and the philosophy behind 4B and why it's more of a framework for how to decenter men. Now, one thing I, I strongly believe is that men and women do serve to support one another in different ways. And when men and women can make relationships work, it's fantastic. But another thing I believe is that it has become harder to make relationships work. There is a gender war. There is a false belief that there are more women than men, which according to the United States Census is in fact false until women and men reach age 55, in every age group, there are more men and boys than women and girls. So it, the scarcity mindset that is out there has to be eliminated. Men encouraging women to settle instead of encouraging women to find and you know hold out for a good partner that's going to treat her well, that's going to be a provider in the household, that is completely ready to take on the uh, responsibility of a wife and a family. Instead of encouraging women to wait, men are encouraging women to just take broken men. And instead of doing that, women should adopt the 4B movement and be happy, happy to find contentedness in looking to spirit, um, relying on the divinity within, leaning on the Lord. Whatever you want to call it, it goes with every religion. Now, I have defined the 4B movement in America differently than Korea. And I, I believe we should have different motives. We cannot look to Korea as the exact model because this is this is the United States. So to me, the four B's, no betrothal, which is no marriage, no marriage, no babies, no bromances, which no homeboy friends. That's what I mean by no, no bromances, no fake brothers, no homeboys who are like play cousins, none of that. And the final be no boyfriends. So when I say women should really think about how to do 4B while also dating, it might be confusing because you're like, well, well, what do you mean? No boyfriends. How do you do 4B if you're going to have a boyfriend and, and date? You shouldn't have a boyfriend while you're dating. You should just be dating. Boyfriend, girlfriend, that has to be eliminated. That title, the privileges, the fake privileges that exist within the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship you have to be taken off a pedestal. There are no privileges to being someone's girlfriend. That is the dating phase where people are getting to know one another and, yes, almost being like friends, that's, that's, those are the friends that are in your circle should only be men that you would consider for long-term partnership. It should really be more like a courtship situation. Courtship and dating are different. Court, courtship and boyfriends are different. Boyfriends in America, at least, seem to be entitled to sex. That cannot be a part of the 4B movement. And if you're going to date, it should be the, for the purposes of furthering your life, enhancing your life, even if you don't want to get married. If you do want to get married, um, then you exit the 4B movement because the 4B movement is really for single women. And women should not be acting betrothed to men who are not their actual husbands. So I maintain no betrothal. 
No acting and hoping for marriage. Just take marriage off the pedestal and focus on the content of the person during courtship. And then after marriage, then betrothal is on the table. Then baby's boyfriend is, you know, never in existence. And at that point, you really won't need any male friends because you will have a husband. If you so desire. A lot of women don't even want husbands. For women who do, I, I you know, no, no, there's no judgment for me with that. There's no judgment for me who, for women who want husbands. But until he is a husband, do not acting betrothed. Do not act like you have a special status as a person's girlfriend because the risk is too great. And many, many a woman have found themselves out in the cold after relying on the boyfriend to be in their corner the entire lifetime long. It's, it's a risky proposition. I would not recommend doing it and also having children. So no babies, no fake betrothal, um, only real, only real. So single women adopting the four B's may not even want to consider interacting with men for marriage, just courting them to see where their minds are at and if they can enhance your life. And then after, if they can enhance your life and you feel comfortable with taking the leap into marriage, then fine. I'm, I'm definitely not against it, but the main goal is for women to feel soft life, like not, a lack of struggle. Because for so many years, men have treated their wives and girlfriends like they don't like them, like they're not even real people. I have so many stories of women in relationships who turned into pick me's because they were already addicted, already girlfriend, already chemically attached to a man, you know, hormonally attached to him, acting like his wife. She, so she's super invested and she turns into someone who allows him to disrespect her with small slights. Like little things guys do that make life harder for women. Like ignoring her. Forgetting important dates. Not being prepared. Weaponized incompetence. Not offering to help. Not being able to help. Being in a position where he's not financially stable. So he is a kind of a dead weight. Those are the ways that men demonstrate that they don't add to your life and should not be a part of your personal courtship process. Women should only involve themselves with men who are stable, who view them as worthy of their respect, being cherished, being cared for, you know, it's so common to watch men treat their homeboys better than they treat their spouse or girlfriend. And that's the frustrating part that women are fed up with. It's not necessarily that men have to be cheating or they have to be um, engaging in some sort of violence. Women are not just sit- sitting around waiting for those things to happen. Women are dumping men who who treat them worse than they treat their homeboys, basically. Who treat them low. You know, men who disrespect women by saying things like, oh, you know what, I'll call you back, or yeah, I'll, like, we'll do something this weekend, and then they never follow through. There's no point. There's no point in dealing with the man who just doesn't follow through on the little things. Women are seeing that. That's what the courtship phase should be uh, built around finding out. And uh, requiring a man to invest in you 
and demonstrate to you that he will have the utmost respect for your relationship. It's really an old timey concept. People might think that the 4B movement is progressive, but really it's not progressive at all. It's regressive. It's saying, okay, we got to we got to kind of reverse course. And we cannot put the toothpaste back in the tube, but we can definitely put our pants back on and put the coochie back in the panties. We can do that. You know, we're not trying to make men change. If they want more girlfriend relationships, they can, I'm surely find women that are available for that. They might want to go overseas. But at this point, women do not want to deal with men's uh, snide behaviors. They're small, micro, disrespectful um, actions. Gaslighting, you know, lying. Of course, there's cheating. And then there's also violence. And then there's also the potential for, um, you know, damaging children, um, damaging finances. These things happen a lot. Actually, I have a story that I'm going to share with you. This is one of the most ultimate pick me stories that I've ever heard. Ever. So a family friend, she got with a man maybe mid 90s and they started having kids. She gave him two sons. A few years after that, they ended up getting married after, you know, trials and tribulations. She finally proved that she could work hard enough to support the family because he was, you know, kind of not really reliably working ever. So they lived and lived and hopped from family house to family house, couch to couch, sometimes having their own place, sometimes having uh, to go live with family. Um, And they found a place and after a few years, he found out that he'd fathered two daughters. He found them online. Actually, they found him. He said that these two girls were, you know, his family. He, did, he wasn't even aware that they were alive. They found him. And he wanted them to move in. So the wife, she's working hard. He's working here and there. His um, new daughters, well, you know, his long lost daughters move in. And it comes out that one of the girls, um, you know, is, is his favorite. And she and him, they're just constantly close. They... They share notes and giggle. When every time she walks in the room, they're like giggling. Sometimes he'll he'll spend time with them in different rooms and lock the doors. And she wouldn't even be able to get in. So after about a year of this, the truth comes out that these are not his kids. And he basically moved in a 20-year-old girl and her sister into the house with his wife and their sons and barely worked while she paid the bills. Now, the girls eventually moved out, but you know what? Wife kept on trucking. She was built for it tough. 350 pounds for it tough, as a matter of fact. She didn't realize, even despite that, she's still a pretty woman. And very sweet. So she ended up continuing to stay married to him despite the fact that he moved in some random stranger pretended like this was his child. So it's been now two or three years since that's happened. And he announced on, I believe it was her birthday, that he was leaving her for someone else. So it's been since the mid-90s, over 25 years now, almost 30 years. And after all of her mewling for him, 
and all of her pick me behavior, he's leaving her. And you know what could have helped her avoid all this? The 4B movement, courtship, understanding that in his financial position, he was not prepared to take responsibility for a wife or a family. Not being his boyfriend, having children before he was uh, really ready, fake betrothal, you know, no, no babies. I'm going to have to come up with another word because betrothal, that's for women who really want to give up, but it's really the pretending, uh, you know, the pretending to be engaged or married. That has to be the fourth, the fourth B in how women can adopt 4B while dating. It's got to be something different than what women have been doing these last 70 years. It hasn't been working. The free sex, the having babies, the um, psychological, uh, you know, A-B-U-S-E, the psychological A-B-U-S-E, all of that is not worth it. So it's better to have peace of mind and your connection to God, trusting in the, the divinity within you will not allow you to just take any old thing. You know, unless it's for your survival, then you don't have to, to take it. Unless it's adding something to your life, it's actually taking away. So, I mean, it's just simple math. So anyway... I'm continuing to explore this concept because I do believe that relationships can be beautiful when they work well, if women want them at all. Because even when they work well, they do take work. Work. The work goes well, but it's work. And if you already have a job, you might already have kids, um, you already have the peace in your life, you might not want to add another shred of work to your life. So that's completely understandable, ladies. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say in the comments. Let me know. We'll be talking soon.